Lieutenant Mike Allard. I'm an instructor at the Helicopter Instructor Training Unit here at Whiting Field. And uh, this is going to be a power-off demonstration uh, video, uh, basically going through all of the standard power-off maneuvers that we do uh, as, uh, as students uh, in the FTI uh, to give you at least some sort of basis to work from uh, when you first uh, get ready to start these maneuvers with your instructor in the aircraft. Keep in mind that this isn't an end-all and be-all. Uh, your instructor is going to teach you a lot of different techniques that are still going to be within the FTI, but maybe a little different than what you see exactly in this video. And this video is really designed to give you a chance to actually see uh, these maneuvers before you go out flying in the aircraft and hopefully chair fly at home so that you're not completely going to this, this stuff cold when you first start off with your instructor. So hopefully you enjoy these and uh, you'll get something out of them. The first maneuver that we're actually going to conduct here is going to be a hover cut gun or a simulated engine failure in a hover. I've already confirmed that the aircraft is actually into the wind. The winds are relatively calm here at Spencer's today, so I'm using this 360 heading that we've actually got right now. I'll lift the aircraft up into a hover and actually uh, begin the cut gun using the standard FPI verbals or ditties, whatever you want to call them, uh, that are in the book to actually get the aircraft safely on the deck. Keep in mind with this technique, uh, maneuver, a little technique uh, uh, input from, from my part here. Uh, you, this maneuver uh, shouldn't be any different uh, or very much different than a normal landing. This aircraft has a bunch of ro rotor inertia uh, set up in it. It's a high inertia rotor head. So therefore, when I freeze the collective, I'm only freezing the collective to allow the aircraft to get to a descent rate that feels comfortable for me, and then I'm pulling up on the collective to maintain that descent rate as I come all the way down to the ground. And from the outside of the aircraft, other than the rotor spinning down, uh, it shouldn't look very different than a normal landing. And additionally, from the inside of the aircraft, it shouldn't look different from a vertical landing except for the fact that instead of the collective coming down to actually initiate the landing, the collective is actually coming up as we get closer to the ground. So let's try this. Clear right up, coming up. Establishing the aircraft here in a nice five-foot hover, and your instructor is going to bring the twist grip to flight idle on you, but I'm going to do it uh, for myself today here in the right seat and initiate the maneuver. Keep in mind that you don't exactly have to keep the nose aligned with the same position that it's in uh, right now. All we have to do is if the nose yaws to the left, when we come down, we stop that yaw and keep no yaw as we actually touch down. All right, initiating the maneuver. Here comes the twist grip to flight idle in three, two, one. Freeze the collective, stop the yaw and the drift, and cushion, cushion, cushion. And you can see that I use the collective to maintain a steady descent rate all the way to the deck. Maneuver's complete. Let's go on to the next one. The next maneuver we're going to do is going to be a hover taxi cut gun or a simulated engine failure in a hover taxi. I'm going to back taxi here a little bit to give us a little bit more room to actually conduct this maneuver. Similarly to the standard cut gun, which you just saw, saw, the maneuver is generally the same, although we're allowing the aircraft to actually continue to work its way forward as we come down and arrest that, uh, arrest that rate of descent of the aircraft as NR starts to bleed off. I'll start a nice, easy forward hover taxi here. And at some point along this hover taxi, I'm going to bring the twist grip to flight idle the general attitude that I am in right now and allow the aircraft to come down. Here comes the twist grip to flight idle. Freeze the collective, stop the yaw and the drift, and cushion, 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 cushion. And a nice easy reduction of the collective as the aircraft comes to a stop. Common student errors in this uh, type of maneuver that you're going to see normally is a tendency to flare the aircraft. Keep in mind that you want to keep the same attitude that you were basically seeing in a hover or a hover taxi when you do these maneuvers. Um, if you bring the nose too far aft to actually stop uh, the forward motion of the aircraft, you could get yourself into a position where you strike your stinger or even touch with the heels of the, of the skids first, which could cause a rocking motion in the aircraft as it comes to a stop. So keep those skids level. Alright, the next maneuver that we're going to be accomplishing right now is a thousand foot straight in auto. You'll start these at the beginning of your auto rotation 
training to just figure out the auto-rotational characteristics of the aircraft and keep the aircraft less dynamic on a straight end so that it's easier for you to understand the concepts that we're trying to teach. As we continue to climb to 1,000 feet here, we're almost there. We can take a look down at our lane. I'm going to shoot it to the 90 lane on the left side here. It's Spencer. That lane is clear. The windsock is showing some sort of a head headwind component, and our harnesses are locked and we're ready to begin the maneuver. And I can make a call that we're actually going to be conducting a 1,000-foot auto traffic call uh, in, the, uh, in the 90 lane here on the left side. this maneuver, your instructor can also show you some auto-rotational characteristics of the aircraft. For instance, on this one, I'll show you that if I nose it over and our falls, on the, nose it over on the cyclic. If I bring the cyclic aft, just like as in a flare, NR is going to climb. And then if I increase or decrease the collective NR, uh, uh, falls and rises appropriately with that increase or decrease. So here we go, inter introducing the maneuver. All right, down, right, idle, no turn is required as I slowly bring the aircraft back to a 60 knot attitude to accomplish the maneuver here. If I nose it forward, NR, you can see it fall. If I bring the cyclic aft, NR rises. If I increase the collective, NR falls. And then if I decrease the collective to the bottom, I actually get my NR back. Now we've got the aircraft back in a nice 60 knot attitude here as we pass through 200 feet. We're on course line. There's 150 feet, the collective is full down, and 100 feet, here comes the flare, and the twist grip comes smoothly to full open. Wait for the pull at the bottom, a nice easy pull here. Pull, pause, level, taxi, taxi, taxi. And since we've completed it with some forward motion, I can continue to transition the aircraft to forward flight, and that's the end of the maneuver. straight in on a rotation. You'll do these after you do your 1,000 foot straight ins. Keep in mind on this one that we won't be uh, playing around with the auto rotational characteristics of the aircraft. We'll stick more to the ditty uh, or the verbals uh, that you can find in your FTI. And we'll finish the maneuver again in a power recovery auto rotation. I can look down at our lane again and we're going to be using the 90 lane one more time. And I can see that the lane is clear. The windsock is showing some sort of headwind component and our harnesses are locked. And as we come around to final here, I get all my parameters in check and ensure that I've got a nice 70 knot attitude on the aircraft. About 750 feet on the bar out here, which equates to about 600 feet AGL here at Spencer, with the ball nice and centered and the VSI at or below zero. And as we roll out on final here, I'll get ready to enter the maneuver. All right, and enter. Down, right pedal, idle, no turn is required, as I pick up a nice 60 knot attitude with the aircraft. That kind of is somewhere in between, you know, with the uh, screw here, just a little bit below the horizon. 200 feet, on course line, 150, collective is full down, and 100 feet, a nice easy progressive flare again, and the twist grip comes smoothly to full open. And now we just wait for 10 to 15 feet, looking completely outside of the aircraft to start the pull. Here's 10 to 15, pull, pause, level, and a nice taxi, taxi, taxi. The maneuver's complete, clear right forward on the go. Right, the next maneuver that we're gonna be conducting is uh, introducing some turns into this auto rotation profile. We'll start with some 90s, and we'll take this maneuver to a full auto rotation at the bottom so you kind of know what that looks like a little bit uh, before you actually fly this when you're instructor. I've stabilized the aircraft at about 600 feet AGL here. The rat out in this aircraft is a little bit off and that's not a big deal. Confirming again that the lane lock sock procedure has been completed and everything looks good, just as in the previous auto rotations. And I've got myself set up on a decent downwind here, a good distance away from the field, so that when I turn onto this base leg here to set up for the 90 degree auto rotation, as a student, I've got more than enough time to actually set up and get myself on parameters so that I enter the maneuver at a safe point. Starting the turn here. I'm going to be using 
Collision again, the 90 auto lane here at Spencer on the left side. On this 360 heading today. And as I roll out, I make sure all my, I have all my parameters. The VSI is at or below zero. I'm at 70 knots. And I'm entering the maneuver. Down, right, idle, turn, attitude, NR, ball. Attitude, NR, ball. Nice 94 to 95% on the NR. Holding about a good 60 knot attitude, maybe 50 to 60 knot attitude. The ball is centered. Wait for 200 feet. 200 feet, I'm on course line. 150 is collective full down. 100 feet flaring, the twist grip remains at flight idle on this condition to do a full auto rotation. And we wait for 10, 15 feet to start the pull. Here comes the pull, nice easy pull. 10, pull, pause, level, cushion, cushion, cushion. And the collective gradually comes down as the aircraft comes to a stop. A couple things to talk about before um, we shut off the video here. Uh, 50 to 60 knot attitude. You really probably want to shoot for closer to a 60 knot attitude and you can use the sense group in the middle of this cross uh, beam here to actually determine what that 60 knot attitude is. Uh, your eye height and everybody's eye height is different, but this set screw should be some distance below the horizon to achieve that 60 knot attitude that you're looking for. And in addition, when you're actually in the turn, keep in mind to not look at the airspeed indicator too much, because the airspeed indicator is unreliable in the turn, and uh, if I try to keep the airspeed uh, indicator in my scan during the turn, what's going to happen is, is I'll keep the nose too low below the horizon and we'll lose too much altitude when really what we want to do is just continue with the turn, get the aircraft and keep enough altitude uh, to come and roll out on final with more than enough altitude to complete the maneuver. All right, if that maneuver is complete, we'll move on to the next one. All right, the next maneuver that we're going to be conducting is a 180 degree full auto rotation. Just as in the last maneuver with the 90, uh, I don't want to worry about the airspeed indicator too much when I'm going through the turn. It's relatively unreliable, and if I keep the, instead look outside and keep the attitude relatively on the horizon with the nose, I should be able to have more than enough altitude when I roll out on final uh, to actually complete the maneuver in a safe, uh, defined manner, uh, you know, every time. Lane lock stock still all conducted here. Getting ready to conduct this in the left side of the 180, uh, 180 lane here at Spencer and entering the maneuver. Down, right, idle, turn. Some people use over, back, and up. I usually don't like it. You can see I've got the aircraft in a nice, easy turn all the way around, nice and lazy turn. And as we roll out on final, I immediately re-attack and get my 50 to 60 knot attitude, bringing that set screw below the horizon. There's 200 feet on course line, 150. Collective is full down, 100 feet flare, and the twist grip is at flight idle. So wait to pull at 10 to 15 feet. Level. Cushion. 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 For a nice soft touchdown. Maneuver complete. For the final maneuver of this video, uh, we decided to shoot another 180 full auto rotation uh, with just the ditties or the verbals uh, per the FDI and no real instruction for myself so you can get a better idea of uh, the chair flying process as you're actually flying at home. Hopefully these maneuvers, uh, you'll enjoy them. Uh, they should be confidence building for you as you continue to progress towards your solo. And uh, fly safe and uh, have a great time doing these maneuvers because they're fun. Lane lock sock, we've already confirmed it. VSI is out or below zero, I'm at 70 knots. Just wait to enter the maneuver at about 600 feet AGL here. Enter. Down, right, idle, turn, attitude, NR, ball. Attitude on our ball, nose on the horizon, looking good. Attitude in our ball, in our right where it should be. Getting ready to roll out here. Rolling out, right on that 60 knot attitude. Attitude on our ball, 200 feet on course line. 150 collectives full down. 100 feet flare, twist grip is flied. I don't swing in the maneuver here at 10 to 15 feet. Pull, pause, level, 